Hi, my name is Christopher Mitchell, author of Using the TI-84+, Plus, as well as Programming the TI-83+, Plus, TI-84+, Plus, and Administrator of the Calculator Community website, Chemitech. Today, I'll be discussing expanding your graphing skills with the TI-84+, Plus CE. I'll be taking my material from Chapter 5 of this book here, Using the TI-84+, Plus, and I'll be talking you through parametric mode, polar mode, sequence mode, and then some brief material on how to draw on graphs. Let's start with the first section, parametric mode, which is covered in section 5.1 of the book. To set your calculator into parametric mode, first press mode, then move the cursor down to function, move it over to parametric and press enter. Parametric will turn into white text on a black background, indicating that it has been selected. In addition, when you go to the Y equals menu with the Y equals key, you'll see that instead of Y1, Y2, and so on, you have X1T and Y1T, X2T and Y2T, and so on. These function pairs let you define X and Y functions for a parametric function in terms of the independent variable T. Let's try a simple example that lets you graph a unit circle. First, go to mode and ensure that you are in radian mode. If you're in degree mode, this example won't work properly. Now go back to y equals and enter cosine of t. Now I'm typing this with the xt theta n key. That'll type a t when you're in parametric mode. And I'll close the parentheses. And then for y1 t, I'll enter sine of t and close my parentheses. If I press graph, I get a circle at the origin with radius 1. That's the unit circle. If we wanted to expand that circle, we can press second delete to get insert and add second insert delete an 8 before the cosine and the sine. This will make each of our x and y coordinates eight times larger, so that'll give us a circle of radius eight. This looks oblong because the graph screen is 20 units wide along the x-axis and 20 units tall along the y-axis, but the x-axis is longer in pixels. We can correct this by going to zoom, choosing five, zoom square, and pressing enter. Now we get a nice round circle. A more complicated example would be something called a Lisa's U curve. In order to graph this, we will go to y equals once more, clear out any equations that you have in x1t and y1t, and then type 8 sine of 5t for x1t and 8 cosine of 3t for y1t. Now, press graph, and you will get what is called a lisa u curve. One additional skill you might want to know with parametric graphing is how you can change the values used for t. You already know how to change x min, x max, y min, and y max from the second of these videos covering graphing, but you also can now change t as you can see in the window menu. This t goes from a t min of 0 to a t max of 2 pi, 6.28 is 2 times pi, and it has t steps of 0 0.1308996. If we wanted more detail on our graph, we can shrink the t step. For example, if I change this to 0. 0, 3, which is smaller than what we had there, and then press graph again, you'll see that the graph takes longer, but it has more detail. The curves are sharper and not made of as long line segments. The next type of function we might want to graph is a polar function. To switch into polar mode, press mode, move down to the line that has function, parametric, polar, and seek on it, seek for sequential. Press enter on polar and it'll turn once again into white text on a back, black background indicating that polar has been selected. Press y equals and the y equals menu has changed once again. Now we have r1 equals, r2 equals, r3 equals. Now these are functions for the radius r in terms of some angle theta. And this time when we plus, press the xt theta n key, we get a theta instead of either x or t. Polar graphing lets you graph functions that are where r is the dependent variable and theta is the independent variable, let's try something that will create a simple spiral. We can do theta over pi, and you can type pi by pressing second and then the exponent key. If we graph this, you'll see we get a very small spiral on the graph screen. Once again, we can experiment with the values for theta, whereas in parametric mode we experimented with t, in order to change what that spiral looks like. We know that our independent variable is theta, so let's try being able to plug in more values for theta. Here we have theta going from 0 to 2 pi. Let's see what happens if we change it to 8 pi instead. And when we 
type 8 pi and press enter, the calculator will compute what 8 times pi is and replace it in that line there. Now, when we graph, we see we get a much larger portion of the spiral because the calculator is not only testing values of theta from 0 to 2 pi, it's testing values from 0 to 8 pi. The final graphing mode you might want to explore is sequence graphing. To switch to sequence mode, press mode, move once again to the function parametric polar sec line, move the cursor to sec and press enter. Sequence will become selected. Go to y equals and it'll have changed once more into a new form for the sequence mode. You can see that you can only enter as many as three sequence functions simultaneously, but they are more complex functions, so the calculator has to spend more time computing each one. Sequences are especially good for exploring recursive functions, one where the value of any term in the sequence is dependent on all of the previous terms in the sequence. Let's try a simple sequence that will help us determine the squares of the numbers, and it'll show us what squares of numbers look like as the number increases. So we'll start with n min equals 1. This means that the minimum term in the sequence that we're graphing is 1. Now, each subsequent term in the sequence can either be a number or it can be based on the previous term in the sequence. For this simple example where we're computing squares, all we need to type in is n squared. And that will take the uh, sequence item number n, square it, and set that to be our y value. Um, n will be on the x-axis. If we press graph, we see something that goes off the top of the screen. So what's happening there exactly? If you think about it, we are graphing 0 to 10 on the x-axis, um, and we want to determine what the y values will be. Since we're doing squares, we know that by 3, 3 squared is already 9, which is at the very top of our 0 to 10 y range. So what we can do is we can change our window. We have n min is 1 and n max is 10. So let us change our x min, which is also our, the value of n min graphed on those axes to 0, the maximum value to 10. And then pick some good y bounds. Well, we know that we're starting with n min equals 1, and 1 squared is 1. So the lowest we could possibly have on our y axis is 1. Let's put in 0 just so we see the x axis there. Now, we also know that our n max is 10, and we're squaring n. So 10 squared is 100. So let's try setting 100 as our y max. Now, this window should show more of the function that we're graphing. And if we press graph, you'll see that's the case. We have n plugged in for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. And we have values ranging from 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, all the way up to 10 squared is 100. As with the previous videos, I've given you a small sample of the examples you might want to try with each of these function graphing modes. As in the previous videos, I've given you a small sample of the things you might want to do with these different graphing modes. Refer to Chapter 5 of using the TI-84 Plus or to your math textbooks for more functions you might want to graph in parametric, polar, and sequence mode. As a closing topic, let me tell you about how to draw on the graph screen. In order to show you this, I'm going to switch back to function mode from the mode menu, quit from that menu, and press graph. I see that my axes have been changed as per the example I was just doing. So I'll press zoom, go down to zoom standard number six and press enter. This will reset the window to what we're used to when we first turn on our calculators, y from negative 10 to, sorry, y from negative 10 to 10 and x from negative 10 to 10. In order to draw on the graph screen, we can use the tools that are found in second program, which is the draw menu. We can do things like clear the screen, draw lines, draw horizontal and vertical lines, draw a tangent to a curve or to a line, draw a function, shade an area, draw circles, and even draw text. We can also turn points and pixels on the graph screen on and off. And these are especially useful if you're writing a program and you want to either mark up a graph or even create a game on the graph screen. Let me just show you some simple examples. First, I can do a circle. The calculator will first ask me what the center of that circle should be. I will move the cursor to where I want it and press enter. Then it'll ask me the radius. So I'll move my cursor out to a point I want to be on the radius of the circle, press enter. and It'll draw a circle of that radius at that center. I can also go to style, choose a different color for my circle, say light blue, press enter. 
and then I can draw a circle again, again, picking the center and a radius. Another thing I can do is return to the draw menu with second program, go down to line. Once again, I could select a color and a style if I wanted, do red this time. And I will try to roughly connect the centers of these circles with a line segment. You can see that as I draw this line segment, the calculator is showing me what it's going to look like once I press enter to make it permanent. And there it is. You can also select actual specific points for these drawing features. So let's say I wanted to draw a horizontal line. I can specify that I want to draw this horizontal line at exactly negative five by going to second draw from the home screen, selecting horizontal and then typing negative five. When I press enter, you'll see that horizontal line is drawn at negative five. As with many of the menus on your calculator, you can find information about each of these commands by going to the command and pressing plus. The calculator will tell you that after horizontal, it's expecting at least a Y value and then alter, uh, optionally a color and a line style for that horizontal line. You can find more information about drawing on your calculator in using TI-84 plus chapter five. And if you want to use drawing commands on your TI-84 plus CE in programs, you can refer to Appendix D of programming the TI-83+, TI-84+, available at manning.com. Thank you for watching. As always, refer to using the TI-84+, available from the links in this video's description. Uh, you can also get help on the Chemitech forum, chemitech.net. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for future videos about graphing calculators, uh, programming, Minecraft, and much more.